Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, July 24th, 2020. And this is our weekly look back at last week's eBay auction results, see what's happened over on the global member pages, talk about some other auction results, and um, you know, sort of bring everything up to date as we try to do each week. One of the things I wanted to mention was that we did do a second video uh, earlier this week, another video on the uh, Hong Kong uh, sales that happened uh, around the 9th, 10th, and 11th of this month over uh, uh, with uh, Christie's and uh, Sotheby's, uh, what the prices were, what did well, what didn't do well, a few things didn't sell. It was a, you know, a typical auction. Uh, you had surprises, winners, and losers. But it was a, a, an interesting thing, and I, and I think overall it, it spoke pretty positively of the way the, uh, the market is going right now. Uh, one of the things I also wanted to mention was that we had uh, – uh, talked a bit last week about our, our wanting to look into starting a uh, an auction site, sales site for those of you that like to buy online, those of you that like to sell online, and uh, what your suggestions would be because the the technology is now here that we can we can go about and do this kind of thing that wasn't available a couple of years ago even really, but it is now. And uh, we, we put a, a link in here um, on, this, on the uh, newsletter page, and you could come over and read what we were thinking. Oh, it's, this is a blog we posted. And we asked last week that some of you if, you, if you have comments or suggestions of what you'd like to see, let us know. Send us a, an email. Um, as many of you know, I'm, we're pretty approachable here. We're not hard to get a hold of. And uh, just uh, let us know what it is you want to uh, do, what you would like to see on a site, what you, what, the things that are important to you, and send it in. And what we're doing is we're taking all – we got a lot of comments. We probably got, uh, I think, 30 or 40 emails last week. Some just supporting the idea, but other people making solid suggestions. Um, and we appreciate all of it uh, because it takes a bit of encouragement to get the thing like this launched. And um, uh, what we're doing is we're sort of building a top ten list of what you'd like to see most on a, on a website you know, as a buyer or as a seller or as both. All right. So, you know, what kind of a layout maybe you'd like? What Send us links to sites that you've seen that you like their layouts, designs you like, designs you don't like, um, uh, options, and so forth. And we're going to sort of compile it and we're going to, you know, let, let the people that use the site should help, I believe, be the author of how it looks, how it works, and how it functions because uh, we want it to be a, a good environment for everybody. Um, and uh, as you know, if we go ahead with this, we are going to vet it the way we try to do with the, um, the, the newsletter page each week, with the Catawiki stuff, with the stuff that we post on the global member pages. Uh, we go through and hint, like at the global member pages, as you know, we, we pick out the stuff that ends up on it. We don't just go into live auctioneers and let, just scrim in, you know, an, endless listings without any sort of regard for uh, what we think of them or, or, or authenticity. And uh, we're going to do the same thing with the uh, with with this uh, this idea. We're gonna we're gonna vet it, um, uh, uh, and, and and we're also not going to put up with non-payers and any none of this other stuff. So please go over, read the blog, make a suggestion. We're gathering them up, and uh, it's it's deeply appreciated. We really do. We really do appreciate it. All right, now let's take a look here. There were a few things that happened uh, this week. One of the things was that, uh, 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 back to the online things, uh, Bonhams and Christie's both had online sales. One of them is, is wrapping up today over at Christie's, and the results so far are quite good, and we're going to go through some of the results that are in so far. Uh, all the global, the global pages will all be updated fully by noon tomorrow. We updated it just a couple of days ago before some of these sales began, and now we're going to have, we'll update it again. Uh, we usually try to update it two, two to three times a week and we tinker in between and uh, so forth all right but we're going to take a look and see how things did and this is going to be uh, Bonhams at first um, they had a pretty good online sale um, uh, this was these were sales put together by Bruce McLaren down in New York uh, at, at Bonhams uh, uh, did a good job good photography good descriptions and uh, one of the one of the lots that went through that I thought was very nice was this pair of um, uh, brush pots low relief carved brush box that pots that were uh, signed and so forth beautifully done and uh, I think they sold for a reasonable price I don't think it was crazy uh, if you're if you're a scholar's object collector they went for five thousand and seventy five dollars and these are these uh, Liu Ching carved brush pots which is that very low relief uh, uh, almost looks like it's carved with lasers it's beautiful they're beautifully done
done. And uh, this was a nice, uh, probably mid-late Qing pair, but nice quality, very nice quality. And then they had this. This was one of my favorite things that they had was this big long neck uh, uh, pear-shaped uh, uh, bottle vase, a beautiful, beautiful Lang Yao piece. And... Um, it's a uh, 18th century, possibly Kong Chi, probably mid 18th century. Anyway, I think I, I think it was a pretty good buy. It went for seventy five hundred and seventy five dollars, including the buyer's premium. Bottoms includes their buyer's premium and all their results, and so does Christie's. All right, so seventy five hundred dollars, and this was a big vase. It was what was it? It was sixteen inches tall. Nice size pot, very deep, nice dark color. Really, really attractive. And then they had this, the uh, Ming uh, Long Quan Celadon uh, vase. And you may remember, if you've seen, if you take a look at the video we did this week um, on the uh, on the sales over in Hong Kong, a similarly shaped vase to this, but a better a better one, sold for a huge amount of money. So if you if you if you don't ever going to be in the in the position to pay a few hundred thousand dollars for the other one, this is a good one. And happily on their on their listings, they included the foot rims, the bottoms, the fronts, the backs. Um, they did the pho photography. So do the way people sell on eBay do. They've got lots of lots of images, and in this they did a good job. So you gave you gave folks a chance to take a look and really learn something about how um, these things should look if you get up close to them. And uh, a good photography work here they did. Very, very nice. And uh, this one uh, did, did fine. It ended up selling for $18,825, which is within reason. And it was how big? Good size pot, 14 inches tall. Very attractive, though. Very elegant. Didn't have quite the narrow base and elongated body that the one that brought all the money over in Hong Kong did, but this is a charming piece, a very, very good piece. Well worth the money. Very well worth the money. And then onto this was that nice Tang Dynasty uh, pot. I had mentioned it in a video a couple weeks ago. It just struck me as being just so pretty and beautifully shaped. And uh, it had, a, had its uh, lid it's nine inches tall, the way most of these are. Uh, these Tang pots, sometimes they, they look in photography like they'd be much, much, much bigger. And they, they really aren't. They tend to be fairly uh, small in size, usually you know under 11 inches, under 10 inches, and there it is. But nice creamy white glaze, uh, beautiful condition, and um, there it is. So I think that was a fabulous buy for somebody, a good buy. And then on to this, the Canton uh, School uh, painting, uh, no signature on it. I thought it had a reasonable estimate. I thought it was very, very nice. And it sold, I think, for a very modest price, $4,000 for this, 4075 including the buyer's premium. If we can get the page slow. The web's a little slow today. I'm not sure why. Uh, come on, load up. There we go. And uh, good quality, very nice detail. I talked about this painting last week a bit. And I think somebody uh, got a nice buy with that. I think that was a good thing to buy. Very, very attractive. And then over on, um, uh, oh, there it is. That's, it was on Invaluable. I went to the bottom site to pull it up because the weird thing about Invaluable is sometimes after the sale is done and the, and the piece is completed, they don't allow you to enlarge the image anymore. Some of them do, some of them don't, and I've never understood why. Okay. And then over here at Christie's, this sale is closing today as I'm recording this. It's still got a few lots to go, not much. Uh, is was this very nice Ming Dragon uh, pot with a uh, one Lee Mark base, Mark and period vase. Very attractive jar, about five inches tall, uh, but quite charming and nice. And as you know, most of these Wan Li uh, jars of this shape and form tend to be often on the small side if they're marked. But this was a nice one. I thought it was very, very attractive. Nice, deep, dark cobalt, well drawn. Uh, sometimes one lead pieces can be a little bit uh, blurry. And uh, at any rate, it, it went for $16,250. So it sold on its uh, on the upper end of its estimate, but it was not unreasonable. That's not an unreasonable price for one of these. Okay. And then we'll mosey on over to uh, this. This was that very handsome Zizhou painted baluster jar that was on the, uh, we actually had this on the, sort of featured on the homepage uh, with just letting folks know when they come into the site what's what's poking around over on the member pages. Uh, I just love the shape of this. I just love the shape and proportions of this. Really, really attractive. And the Zizhou decoration on it was really nice, quickly drawn, very painterly. It was a really, really charming pot, and it was good size. It was 13 inches tall, and it blew away its estimate. It sold for almost four times its high estimate for $30,000. All right, I'm not sure if that includes the buyer's premium or not. I suspect it doesn't.
All right, and then over here to this, uh, this was the next thing that they sold that were very, very nice. It was a pair of coral ground with gilt decorated jardinieres or you know plant stands, basically. They weren't terribly big. These were five inches tall. These were quite small for plant stands. Uh, you put little tiny, maybe like bonsai type trees in them. But the quality of the work on them was really, really good beautifully done they had them as Qing to Republic period I tend to look at them and think yeah these are look more Republic to me than Qing um, especially if you took a look at the bottoms um, there we go and we'll blow those up um, to, to, to me with the, all this orange peel and that foot and the way these are done I, I suspect they're probably Republic but very fine quality very fine quality and um, they ended up selling for five thousand dollars or roughly uh just about five times or four and a half times their high estimate because they were so pretty they were just so darn pretty uh i, I think they brought very good a, a good price for that and then they uh, they also had this it was a nice 10 inch tall fu lion kung shi vase with an eight to twelve thousand dollar estimate and it ended up selling for eighty seven hundred and fifty which i think is pretty reasonable uh good looking vase nice deep dark cobalt color and uh, i love the the foo lion on him he's sort of uh, he's <laughs> he's sort of ferocious looking but at the same time you notice the way they did his eyes one of the eyeballs is looking up the other one's looking down and he's sort of goofy looking from that so uh it's an interesting it's an interesting vase for that for that for that reason alone i think the way they did the foo lion very very muscular very ferocious 8750 and uh then over here to this was the uh, large the big jun bowl that was eight inches in diameter um this was really attractive it was estimated at seven to nine thousand dollars it was jin dynasty and it ended up doing quite a bit better it brought thirteen thousand and i think the reason was the blue if the colors are accurate the blue on this bowl are, is very attractive it's a really nice soft sea sea blue it looks like it's got a bit of crackle in it you can see here you can faintly pull it up a little more yeah, there it is. You can see the crackle in it and so forth. Nicely, nicely done, uh, neatly trimmed and smoothed out foot on it. And this very attractive uh, tan rim where the glaze would, you know, pulls back during the firing and the color of the paste pushes through a bit. $13,750. Nice looking bowl. But one of the big surprises of the day was is another bowl we're going to get to in a minute um, uh, that they sold that, that maybe that maybe they might have wanted to put it in another sale after what they saw is this good big ming late period jar this is a well-known type sometimes you see them around with their lids uh and sometimes you don't but this pattern with these sort of rococo scrolly vines and then these cartouches and the vertical landscapes wrapping around it connecting their cartouches together sort of like magnifying you know magnification of the scene as it moves along uh, around the piece. This is a good one. I, th I thought this was nice. I love these old Ming pots. They're, they're very charming. And, and, you know, it's the kind of thing that, that uh, you know, a person would have, a well-to-do person would have. And a lot of these were sent to Europe as trade goods, too, back in the day. And a uh, nice iron oxide, natural-looking iron oxide line around the foot rim. <clears throat> and this one did fine. It brought $13,750. Uh, with a twelve to eighteen thousand dollar estimate, and uh, good color, good all the way around, and it was fifteen and a half inches tall, very attractive. And then this was the surprise of the day. This was a very very attractive bowl, uh, a, a, a real deep purple splash jun type bowl, Northern Sung Dynasty. Uh, had uh, very nice color, very masculine, very gutsy looking, and. Um, and again, with that nice tan, very even rim. And the thing is, it's interesting about this bowl is that it had a lot of repairs to it. Look, this thing's hit everything but the lottery. And uh, a lot of these big Japanese lacquer repairs running through it all the way around. But boy, the color on this thing was just stellar, just stellar color. And um, this was another shot of it there more you know the repairs were everywhere on this thing anyway it was about five inches uh in diameter these are never that big as you know it was estimated at 15 to twenty five thousand dollars and it ended up selling for a hundred and eighty seven thousand five hundred dollars uh and, and collectors just love this thing to death it was a very attractive bowl and nicely shaped nicely shaped and then here was another one. This this was a, this was something we featured just because I thought it was so pretty. This was just a great pretty bowl with good color contrast, nice soft blue and thick glaze. And it was this uh, a purple splash Jun deep bowl Jin Dynasty? Um, for years and years, they always said these were always sung, and now now a lot of 
they're, they're sort of rethinking some of their dating on some of these pieces of their where, when they were done and where they came from. But a beautiful example, nice rounded shape to it, class, you know, very classical potting, very nicely done foot that you know tips in slightly, and you you can you can see how thick the glaze is down here in the lowest section, the way it bulges down, and uh, it ended up doing fine. With a six to eight thousand dollar estimate, it sold for eleven thousand eight hundred and seventy-five dollars. Not bad, not bad at all. It was a very pretty bowl. I liked it. And again, this was of course Christie's. And then this was something I wanted to share with everybody for a reason. Was that these these vases? Uh, these are uh, 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 Gongshu period uh, bottle vases. A lot of you have seen them before. Uh, they're very well known, very classical uh, from the period. They're very popular, deep, deep uh, cobalt ground, and then these beautiful rondelles all over it with uh, with, with 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 scenes painted with in them of uh, uh, flora and fauna and animals and lotus blossoms and Shao characters and all this. And these are heavily copied today. Okay, these, they they copied these. They have copied these things to pieces. And I wanted to show this because this is a real one. And uh, uh, first thing I want to say is that they did make quite a few of these, but they didn't make a lot of them. All right, uh, they just didn't. They were not. They were not turning these things out by the boatload, or anywhere near the quantities you see them on the market today. So when you see one of these, be immediately suspicious of them if they turn up in some auction somewhere, uh, because they are. They were produced in no enormous numbers, and uh, I'm very pleased that they included a nice shot of the bottom of it. And it's because it's an online sale, so they include extra pictures and, and more more detailed shots that online buyers want to see. And uh, if you look at this uh, bottle vase here, you'll see that the uh, foot rim on this is beautifully white and smooth, uh, iron oxide markings all the way around it, just a nice looking foot. And the way the mark is done, you'll notice that there's some uh, sort of the equivalent of like heaping and piling with the, with the cobalt burned up into the, into the mark when it was being fired, which was fairly normal. Didn't happen all the time, but it happened often. And uh, this was just a lovely piece. And uh, uh, you know, if you if you if you're thinking of buying one of these, remember this one. It's in it's in the catalog over on the website, and you can always go to Christie's and pull it up. Uh, I would suggest those of you that really like these. Come over to Christie's, get the pictures of this, and save them for future reference because this is uh, something that is, is hard to remember all the little details, and these are great for comparison. And it was estimated at ten to fifteen thousand U.S. and sold for seventeen and a half thousand dollars. And I think it might have gone a bit over the estimate because the gilding was still in such really, really good condition on that. And then on to this, I, I wanted to show this is one of those hundred deer jars that was made in the late nineteenth century. And as you all know, the, the, the Chin Lung Originals, which was when these first started to be made in the 18th century, um, they, they were quite different looking. And there's a lot of copies of them around today, and uh, they turn up in auctions often. But this was a real one. We've talked about them, actually, these deer jars in, a, in another video we did on authenticating stuff. And uh, this was a, a good example, very fine quality. And the big, the big difference you'll see when you look at these is, one, the, the deer are a bit different on the later ones. The way they infill the green is a bit thicker, denser, and the way they did the rocks. The, the way the rocks were done became very stylized or more stylized, less fluid feeling in the late 19th century, but still really good quality. There's nothing wrong with this vase. It's a very nice one. And it has a, a less white foot rim revealed at the bottom. Uh, the 18th century ones had very white feet. This one didn't. But regardless, it was estimated at fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and it sold for twenty-five thousand. And that price range for these these uh, you know uh, later examples of very high-end Chinlung pieces that s sell for you know seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand, a million up in that range. Um, that's typically what these are selling for, you know, is on a percentage basis. It's sort of they they bring, uh, uh, you know, two to three percent of the price of the four percent sometimes the price of the uh, of the originals. All right, it's sort of a rule of thumb, um, and it's but it still gets you up to twenty five thousand dollars per item. All right, and then on to this. This is something that's over on one of the global pages right now, and I included. I wanted the people to know that use the global pages to check this out. Now this is a sale that's um, over on it's on the live auctioneers page. It's a thing that's over at Sheffens. And if you like Chinese paintings, I think this is wonderful. It's the it's uh, you, you know some of you know right away what it is. It's it's the, it's the decoration. It's the painting that would have that was on a fan. 
and uh, it's a scene of the Hongs of Canton, and uh, a really interesting, really nifty thing. And that's uh, Sheffens over in England is selling this in about four days, five days. So if it's of interest to you, uh, check it out. It's about uh, how big is this? About uh, 56, uh, 56 centimeters high. How could it be 56 centimeters high? Um, and it's in, a, in, a, in a, it's in a glazed frame. Check it out. I don't know how it could be 56 centimeters high. Maybe, maybe it's the whole thing or something. At any rate, but check it out. It's, it's a fan-shaped design, and I think it would be great to have in your house. And this was something that we had, we had pointed out a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about upcoming sales. And this was a, a, an auction that was done at Freeman's in Philadelphia, a very, very nice pair of um, uh, Chinese export is 1770s or so export vases with those long chimera handles on it. And I think somebody got a, actually quite a good buy on this. They had estimated four to 6,000, which I thought was low uh, because I've seen these actually sell on eBay in, uh, in this size. These were uh, 14 14 inches tall um, for, uh, you know, for, for one of them selling for two thirds of that price. So I thought this was a very nice buy, really good buy. All right. And then over on eBay, things that were going on this week, there was, was this. This was a, a very nice, this was uh, Woolworths down in um, um, Rhode Island. They're, they're dealers down there. They're true antique dealers. And they, they handle estates of all kinds of things, and they get interesting stuff. Because those of you who know the antique and auction market, Rhode Island has some great art and antiques. There's some great antique collections in Rhode Island because they have the history of early New England coupled with the Newport uh, um, a robber baron scene of the 18th, uh, uh, 1800s and early 20th century where a lot of wealthy people came and they brought in great art collections um, throughout the Newport area, not just on, 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 the, uh, on the, you know, the boulevard along the beach, but all over that region. And some great stuff turns up there. And they got this terrine. This was a really nice Chinese export terrine, gilt monogramming on it. They got so, several pieces like this, and they all did quite well. This one brought $1,422. It was about 20, 24 inches long. Very attractive. Very, very nice. And I think that was how big it was, wasn't it? I don't know. This was, might have been the smaller one. Anyway, it brought $1,422. All right. And, oh, no, it was the platters that were very big, like this, this one. This platter was 25 inches. And uh, here's something interesting. It's a lesson in condition. They had a pair. They had two of these platters. One of them was absolutely perfect, and one of them had this little tiny chip right there in the rim. Other than that, I couldn't see any difference between them. Okay, I went over them pretty carefully. And this platter, this huge, beautifully decorated platter, if you don't mind little nicks, so went for $626, which was a pretty, pretty fair price. Remember, this, this plate is over two feet in diameter. It's a big boy, big, big, big one. And uh, then they had this one that was absolutely perfect, had no damage, and it was virtually identical because it came from the same set, had no chips, sold for 1600 and, and change. So in other words, that tiny little rim chip we looked at back here that's right there, all right, that little tiny, tiny rim chip um, impacted the value of this, this uh, platter by $1,000 or by around two-thirds of its value downward two-thirds of its value downward. And had this been a smaller piece of porcelain, the difference would even be bigger. But because it was so big, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But if this was an eight-inch plate with a chip that size, it, 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 the difference would probably be a, a, an 85 to a 90% drop in value because da uh, the damage uh, among collectors just causes such a, a, a knockdown in price. All right, so there it is. There's the difference, 1,600 and 600. Okay, now over here, this was a pair of iron red decorated hat stands, but it was a pair and they were very attractive. They were nicely done. Um, let's see here. Here it is. They uh, had been um, uh, marked on the bases, uh, 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 you know, uh, late, late Qing uh, dynasty, but beautifully done. Typical look on foot rims on them, you know, sort of mucked up uh, and so forth. But the decoration was good and they were in nice shape overall. There they are. And with bats and shao characters, and the, and collectors always like these. They always appreciate these. And the the pair sold for sixteen hundred and thirteen dollars. It's amazing to think that back in the seventies and eighties, you could buy these hat stands um, for oh, you know, twenty five to thirty dollars a piece. You might pay forty five or fifty for a pair. 
back then, 70s and early 80s. They just weren't that much in fashion, but once the Chinese came into the market and began buying hard, the prices of these just went crazy. They used to turn up in auctions all over New England all the time. And then on to this was this little Wan Lee plate. I'm going to get this up and show you. I liked this a lot. I liked it because it had sort of a ruffled rim, and it I liked the way it was drawn. It was very neatly drawn, nice and neatly done. Here's a picture of the back of it with a little bit of kiln grit, and you can see these radiating lines coming out of it. But overall, in very good condition. And I think this was a good buy. Somebody picked it up for $121. Um, this was Coast to Coast Antiques, uh, a fellow I know, his name is Steve, up in Newport, New Hampshire. He gets into estates, uh, and, and he gets some nice things from time to time. Sure does. And then on to this was um, uh, Shangri-La had this beautiful pair, or this beautiful, rather, not a pair, um, a, a Kangxi uh, lotus form bowls with cafe uh, ground on it, and then uh, all beautifully enameled all the way around. But nice color, nice, nice, nice color. And uh, it ended up selling for $425. Um, it had a small flea bite to the, I guess it had a flea bite on the rim, and that was it. I think that was a very good buy. Uh, because that's an unusual color, and uh, it was beautifully painted, and somebody was somebody grabbed it. All right, as I've I, you haven't said it in a long time, but leave a bid for heaven's sakes. When you when you come across something you like, don't stuff it onto your watch list and uh, and 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 then think, well, I'll come circle back for it. Leave a bid on it right away. Get in the game. Get in the game on it, and then eBay will send you extra notifications, and it'll you'll be easier to track. And then they had this was up also this beautiful fish pattern, and they had the the carp and the crayfish and the crabs and all this, and they did these fish aquatic motif plates. They were very very popular, uh, and this was a handsome one, Kung Shi period obviously, and it went for two hundred and twenty four dollars. All right, minor enamel rubbing here and there, but that was a very very pretty set, very charming. And uh, this was ceramics and collectibles, or uh, as they're known, a lot of you know who these guys are, Shangri-La Antiques, the two guys over in the Netherlands. Uh, they're good dealers, good, good dealers. And then on to this. Uh, this I, we had an inquiry about this. Uh, I think it was the owner that was selling it, wanted to know what we thought of it. I thought it was terrific. I love these pear-shaped Lang Yao uh, vases. Uh, most of them are late 19th, early 20th century. Often they're earlier. But this was a good-looking one. And it had this very nice, nicely done, very sort of expensive-looking lamp built for it. And uh, I hope if one of you bought it, you keep it as a lamp. What a great lamp. And... Um, it ended up selling for, uh, let's see, $765, which was fine. Nice looking thing, nice looking lamp. Uh, as I mentioned last week when I talked about it, I wasn't crazy about the shade. I'd get a different shade for it. Shade's too white. All right. <laughs> that's, just, that's just me. All right. And then on to this was that big platter I had mentioned last week, uh, the 15-inch the uh, 18th century platter. Uh, it, it had no bids on Friday when we talked about it. It hadn't really gotten going yet. And um, it only had a couple days to go. But what a beautiful plate. And uh, as I said, be careful when you photograph things. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't use cups in, in the scenes with them because cups are at that they're not that easy to, to tr the sizes don't translate well necessarily to other objects. I'd put, I, we, we prefer to use wine bottles or something sort of big and proportional so you really get a sense of the size because this was a big plate and I think somebody got a good buy on it. Uh, it went for $990, which is perfectly reasonable. It could have even brought uh, thirteen or 1400 We had looked at this um, um, on an inquiry. The fellow sent it in and asked us what we thought of it, and I absolutely loved it. That was a great plate, mainly because the enamels weren't worn on it. That was the big thing. Very attractive. And then over to this, the uh, Chinese silver bamboo relief work decorated export tea, uh, uh, mug, rather. It's a good one, all right? It had a monogram on it with the friendship uh, hands on it. It had a, a mark on the bait, QS. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you ever are looking up these things, you're interested in silver, don't forget that on the reference section over in bit amount, we have um, Adrian von Frisch's entire catalog of uh, silver marks, and it's all alphabetical. You can go right through it, and it's easy to find things. And this sold for $493, which I think was a good buy. It was a nice piece of silver, um, uh, uh, beautifully done. For some reason, he put in dated 1905 scrap. Um, maybe that was because, oh, some people search for silver to, for, to buy it as scrap. Sort of insulting to that thing, isn't it? You sell it as scrap. You use it. All right, and then moving along to this Kangxi uh, 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 Fu Lion plate, uh, Phoenix and, and Fu Lion 
or, or Kieran, actually, that's not a Foo line, it's a, a, a Krillin, and uh, the Phoenix coming down, he's ferociously snarling. And I think the, the lighting on this was off a bit. Had a repair up here, up along the top, um, and so forth. And despite that repair, still did just fine. It brought $541. And it's because the pattern was so good. This is such a, a, such a popular pattern among collectors. And it wasn't enormous. This was only a 21-inch one, uh, 21 centimeters, rather. So it was a, a little over, um, uh, what, se about seven or eight inches or so. Not a big plate, but nicely done, nicely done. <clears throat> and then onto this was the uh, uh, that very nicely done carved uh, vase stand uh, we had talked about a couple uh, a couple a week and a half ago when it went up. Uh, just because good good stands are hard to come by, they all, they they used to be easy to find. They used to sell them in antique shops by the box. So you, in the old days, you, around here in New England, you go to an antique shop and say, "Got any got any Chinese uh, carved stands?" And the dealer, if they wanted to sell them, would pull out sometimes could pull out a box and they might have. 10 or 20 of these in it and say yeah, pick it and you'd say pick out the ones you like and I'll give you a price and uh, and today these and they weren't worth a lot then people nobody appreciated them very much and now they do obviously and this one with a couple of minor breaks on it even went for $560 which is not terribly surprising so when you're out looking around always check for old stands because uh, some places you can still pick them up very very reasonably it's nice to, it's it's a, they're nice to have they're very handy to have and then the last uh, sales item for the week that sold was this this was something we did get the uh, the the, uh, the guy ha inquired with us about this uh, this uh, peach form um, um, brew type glaze uh, 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 brush washer beautifully done um, I liked it a lot done like a southern sung example and uh, he had posted this uh, and wasn't I guess wasn't certain if it was southern sung or what it was we told him it was probably 18th century but but what a great example, a nice example. Even though it had losses up here, it probably had a, a, had a, 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 a branch of some kind and then a little peach on top. But uh, these perfect will sell for, you know, 20, 30,000 and up. All right, here's a picture of the back of it. And uh, it, it was at about $50, I think, when we first looked at it. And I wrote him back and, and he, he, added, he added our comments to the, uh, to the listing. And it ended up selling for $6,400, which was fine. That was a good, a good price for that. Um, and he has sort of an interesting story about how he got it. And uh, I liked that a lot. I thought it was a nice thing. And then over here to what's coming up, one of the things I wanted to mention was that um, uh, Vendel Ries de Nordstrian, Nordstrian, um over in Europe has a sale coming up there. They really listed this early, and, I'm, and I think it's great that they did. It's on the global pages over on um, uh, Invaluable right now on the Invaluable pages. It's a huge Chinese export auction of, of um, a lot, a lot, a lot of 18th, late Ming 18th century stuff. And there's some big Mon Li chargers in here, some, some 15, 16, 17 inch chargers, bowls, jars, some good Saladons. Um, all the way down, and if you if you buy in this in this uh, dating cat in this age category, uh, start checking this sale out now. You have lots of time to get lots of good information to do your homework. But if you're a dealer, I mean, he's got lots like this up here. And as, if you, if a dealer, the first thing I look at on a thing like this is, you know, start doing some math and see 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 what you could buy this for, and then break it up, and then sell it, resell it, and make make some money with it. Maybe keep the, the you know a piece or two for yourself that you really really like in it. And uh, he has very generous lots. Look at this lot here. Look at this whole pile of uh, 18th century plates. Some very nice Famille rows. Some in unusual patterns. Here's one of these brush pots that always brings a lot of money, and so forth. So you want to check that out. Whoops. Remind me later. All right, there. And uh, just go down it. Okay, but as you can see, it's a dandy, dandy auction. Uh, export and, uh, you know, all the great stuff you would have found in Europe uh, that was brought over during that time. Okay, and there's some Japanese things as well. All right, so check that out. And then over here, uh, coming up this week, uh, there's a, a number of decent sales coming up. We get the pages to reload. There we go. Uh, Chamberlain Antiques has a, an auction uh, up right now. It, it, it came up on Friday after we did the newsletter last week. It, end, it closes on Monday. <clears throat> Josh has some good things this week. He's got this. this very nice 18th century, possibly Kung Shi, um, uh, Leng Yao, uh, 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 Glaze the Vase. Good looking one. And... Uh, He's got, uh, there's something else on here. Oh, I'll get to that in a minute. 
The other thing that's on there that will be on the news, these are all be in the newsletter page this week, is this plate. This caught my eye. It just came up yesterday. It literally came up yesterday. It listed last night. It's got nine days and eight hours to go. But a very unusual patterned rim Chinese export plate. Really unusual looking plate. If you're a collector of sort of oddball rare 18th century China trade, the central scene is sort of a stock scene, but this outer wild outer border I think is just terrific. And uh, you might want to check that out if you, if you buy these. Um, it's in good condition somewhere to the center enamels, which is normal. And how big is it? It's a nine inch plate. So in the, in the photo, it because I, when I first saw it, I thought it was just a saucer because of the width of the, uh, the width of the rim. There's a big wide rim on it. And it's actually a nine inch dinner plate, almost a dinner plate size object. And then the, the other thing I wanted to mention was this. This is really, really nice. This is a, a beautifully done 18th or maybe 19th century, probably 18th century carved uh, soapstone Shoshan uh, 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 rider on a horse. Nice details. This has a lot of good detail on it. Nice smooth finish. Looks like a good old one to me. Um, here's a picture of the front, the back, and there are a lot of copies of these floating around. This doesn't look like a copy to me. Um, nice, nice, nice work. Look at the, the detail, the robes, the head, the size of the head, the way it's looking upward, and here's the bottom. All right. And it's, it has one bid on it right now. It'll be on the newsletter page. And it was, it was decent size. It wasn't a little, uh, it wasn't like a little, little, little tiny one. It was almost five inches, okay? But charming quality, just beautiful quality on that. And this is a seller in Santa Clara, California that has it. And then um, uh, uh, Josh, uh, uh, Juice, uh, uh, Josh Chamberlain has this up. This is an interesting lot, and it's also an interesting education because th this is a very nice little uh, later Ming uh, crackle glazed uh, uh, celadon, beautifully done. And um, I noticed that it had a, uh, we had grabbed it to put it in. Then I, I went through the pictures, and I noticed they had the, uh, the Sotheby's, it had sold at Christie's rather, not Sotheby's. And I wanted to take a look at it to see what they had thought of it and how they had dated it, because I was thinking sort of three to $5,000 or something. At at any rate, I went to the uh, Christie's catalog for the sale. Here it is. And uh, excuse the noise when I, when I flip the pages. It gets a little loud. But I want to um, um, show you the bulb, because there's something interesting to learn here. Hold on. That, that, it's an automation sound that they give that makes the pages loud. I hate that. At any rate, there's the bulb. All right, Guan type bowl, late Ming, early Qing, uh, four inches in diameter, five to seven thousand dollars. All right, and uh, <clears throat> this is the this is how we talked last week about white balancing and colors on cameras and how how important it is to get the colors right. Okay, that's the Christie. This is the same exact bowl. I, I triple checked it to make sure that you know that, that it was. So, uh, by, by I actually checked the crackle and some of the, the things on it to make sure it is absolutely the same bowl, and it is. This is the Christie's photograph, sort of a bluish green, and this is uh, the photographs that Josh came out of it. And this is the issue with digital cameras and white balancing. And I haven't seen the bowl personally, so I don't know which color is more accurate. Um, I suspect it probably it may be a little bit sort of in between somewhere, uh, but it's a really interesting exercise in the importance of good photography. So you have the exact same bowl photographed, and you get two very different results, all right? Um, uh, it, 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 I mean, the bowl is nice in either color, but um, I suspect this color is more accurate because I, I'm not a knock on Christie's, but every once in a while they, 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 they don't they don't get the colors right for some reason. Sotheby's too, and I don't understand it. I don't understand how these guys can not get the colors perfect. Um, uh, but I happen to know that Josh spends a lot of time adjusting his lighting to get colors right. So I suspect this is probably um, closer, this sort of bluish green tone and uh, so forth. All right. All right, and that's it for the week. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, please do. Um, come over to bitamount.com and visit, poke around, use the reference books. Um, check out the newsletter page, sign up for it um, here on YouTube. Um, you know, I hope you enjoy these. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, as somebody keeps saying. I forget who the guy is. one of the guys I watch once in a while. And um, um, that's it, okay? We'll see you all next week. Have a wonderful weekend. And um, summer is rolling along nicely, finally. We had lots of rain this week. We had a wild thunderstorm yesterday. And uh, I hope you're all well. All right. And uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube, too. All right. Bye-bye.